morning and welcome to Fairlawn Church. We are so glad that you are here with us. For those that do not know, my name is Jimmy Lloyd. I'm one of the pastors here and this really hot woman, not the horse, this woman is my wife and her name is Julie. And we are going to be your host for this pre-service video. Now, you're wondering, what is the deal with the horse in the background? There's no deal. It's just a horse in the background. Who does not love a horse in the background? Everybody loves it. You don't love horses in the background? No. One person. I know you guys are digging the horse. All right. So... We're going to do the pre-service video. That means you have roughly 10 minutes to get everything in order, get everything situated. But I'm pretty sure you've already done that because you know what's coming up. And it is Bible trivia. And you know that you have the opportunity to win this amazing gift that I don't even need to explain. Why? Because there's no way I could possibly explain it. It's that amazing. Now, what you need to do to participate in the Bible trivia... Tally hard to find good help. Now, what you need to do to participate in the Bible trivia, you need either an answer sheet, which you probably got coming through the door. If you don't, just lift up your hand. One of our ushers will get one over to you. You need that answer sheet and a pen that's probably in front of you. Now, if you're like, hey, I've done enough writing for the day, and you're like, I don't want to do any more writing, I feel your pain, and we got you covered because you can go on your phone and go to fairlawnfp.com and participate in Bible trivia that way. Or you can take your phone, put it on camera mode, scan the QR code that's on the screen right now in front of my face, and you can participate that way because a link will come up. You click on that link. It takes you straight to the Bible trivia. Easy stuff. Either way, make sure your name is on the paper or at the end of the Bible trivia in the electronic form. Okay, you guys, we're getting ready to play Bible trivia, and it's called All By Myself. That's right. I don't want to be all by myself. Okay. I'm tired. All right. So... Are you ready to play all by myself? We're talking about people in the Bible that were at some point all by themselves in these scenarios. Here we go. Number one. Who did God banish from his hometown and had to go from place to place as a fugitive? Was it A, David, B, Cain, C, Aaron, or D, Harrison Ford. All right, number two. Who did God place in Eden as its gardener? A, Adam, B, Barnabas, C, Cain, or D, Old MacDonald? Mm, I heard he had a farm. All right, number three. In first, Thessalonians. Who stayed alone in Athens? A, Timothy, B, Philip, C, Paul, or D, Barry Manilow. All right, number four. Who did Paul send to deliver his letter to Rome? A, Timothy, B, Peter, C, Silas, or D, Phoebe. All right, and number five. Who was exiled to the island of Patmos? Is it A, Paul, B, John, C, Stephen, or D, Tom Hanks. Which one? And now for the bonus. Now the bonus. Listen, there's some rules. It counts. It only counts if there's a deadlock tie. That means there are two or more of you that have the same amount of answers right. If that's the case, then and only then do we go to the bonus. But if there is not a deadlock tie, we just take the bonus, we crumple it up, we throw it in the garbage can like it did not even exist. So no need to riot, no need to shout, no need to panic, no need to run around the church 15 times because you don't know what else to do. Just sit down, 
Calm down. Pick your child up from the floor. Apologize to your spouse for elbowing them as you were getting ready to riot. And now let's just relax and get ready for the bonus. Okay, the bonus. What is the combined age of our, of our new youth pastor and his wife? All right. Yeah, some of y'all are like, what are you talking about? Oh, you'll find out later. But if you don't know, just guess an age. Combined age. All right. Now, that's it for the Bible trivia. What you need to do, we got to get your answers to the back for the ushers. Now, if you have the paper copy, you just wave it in the air like you just don't care. Our ushers will come by. They'll grab it. If you did the electronic copy, they're at the very end. After you put that in your name, you'll click the button that says send message. That will send an email to the tablet in the back for our ushers. Now, our ushers are going to take the paper copy. And then they're going to look at the electronic copy. They're going to then tally up. That's right. Tally up the scores. To find out which one of you lucky sons of a gun get to go home with this amazing gift that I cannot even describe, maybe because I don't know what it is yet. But. It's a horse. It is not a horse. That's what I was going to say. It is not this horse. I need that horse. The angel Gabriel appeared to Mary and told her, you're going to have a baby, and you're highly favored. The Bible says she was very confused. I would say so. Hmm. Thank you for that riveting Bible stuff. Now, you ready to give away some answers? I'm ready. All right, we got some answers to the Bible trivia. All right, here we go. Number one, who did God banish from his hometown? and go from place to place as a fugitive? The answer is B, Cain. All right, number two. Who did God place in the Eden as its gardener? Answer is A, Adam. All right, number three and first, Thessalonians. Who stayed alone in Athens? The answer is C, Paul. All right, number four. Who did Paul send to deliver his letter to Rome? The answer is D, Phoebe. And number five, who was exiled to the island of Patmos? The answer is B, John. Okay, and for the bonus, the answer is to, what is the combined age of our new youth pastor and his wife? 47. 47. I feel old. Yes, very much so. All right, we're going to announce the winner during the welcome and give you your amazing prize. Now, before we go to the service, we have some exciting stuff here at Farallon Church, so we are going to go to the Farallon News. Hello, guys. This is Mr. Horsey, and this is the Farallon News. This Saturday is... At the well, at Miss Diane's house, and it starts at 6 p.m. And I just wanted to let you know that this month is Love Month, and we're going to be showing our community how much we love them. If you have any ideas, we would love to know this. This is the Pharaoh on News. Good day. All right, thank you for that Pharaoh on News. Now, before we finish and wrap this up, we have some special birthday people that we're going to celebrate. So here are the members of our Pharaoh on family that we're celebrating their birthday this week. Happy birthday to Vernon Lloyd, Madison McLeod, Olivia Mittler, Tony Weil, Zachariah Godinez, Kelly White, Jordan Cully, Noah Jacques, RJ McWilliams, and Tina Peterson. All right, so if you guys will all just join together with us as we sing happy birthday to our special birthday family members, we would very much appreciate it. And then just sit back and enjoy the service. Love y'all. Happy birthday.
You ready? All right, come on. All right, so I was informed um, we got a little bit of a correction from the parents of our new youth pastors. All right, the actual age combined is 46, am I correct? 46. Anybody win that? Anybody get that? You got 47? 47. Everybody got 47. Close. Close. I don't know. Did that make a difference? <clears throat> oh. All right. Welcome to Fairlawn, everyone. All right. So there is one person who had a perfect score. Oh, four out of five, but he had a perfect score for the bonus. I think there's a little bit of um, nepotism going on here, but it is Landon. I think he had an inside um, scoop here of the bonus, but we'll let him have it because he is super duper cute. Good job, Landon. Also, just so you guys know, um, horses do not sound like that. Um, I have have a little bit of experience with horses and so next time I can we actually get a real horse to maybe I, I have a plethora of horses that would love to talk like Mr. Ed so anyways everyone welcome to Fairlawn I am super excited that everyone is here it's going to be a great service and I want to tell you guys um, this Saturday which is the fourth we'll have at the well at Diane's house is Diane there Raise your hand. If you need to know where she lives, go talk to her or tell me, and I'll give you her address. And it's going to be really awesome. We're going to be talking about love because it will be February, and we're going to have a super fun activity. So all ladies are invited, and it's at 6 p.m. on Saturday. I look forward to seeing all of you. Yeah, right now. All right. Thank you, Heather. Um, guys, don't be too hard on Julie for getting that wrong, that question on the bonus. Yeah, just, um, we are Church of Grace and Love, and we, acceptance. <laughs> so, um, we have an announcement. We made a, an informal announcement during, um, the breakfast. We're doing a formal announcement now. It is the worst kept secret at Fairlawn, probably. Um, but we uh, do, we are very excited to announce we have um, a new youth pastor. And um, him and his wife, they are as a team. Yes. Any, uh, when you have a pastor and his wife, it's, it's, it's a team. It's, a, it's um, working hand in hand. So I'm going to ask um, at this time if Kevin and Rachel will come forward. And... Um, even though we, we're now, this is their official start date, um, which, by the way, it was, um, it was Kevin's mom that um, reminded me. I wasn't even thinking about that. This is also Farallon Church's 72nd birthday. So, yeah, 72 right. years. It's a day. And it is also Doug and Susan's anniversary. Come on. So, yeah. Also 72 years. That's awesome. And um, that, that is our anniversary gift to them is they get to um, sit in church with um, their son and his wife. So everybody else try topping that anniversary gift. Yeah. Farallon for the win. Um, we, um, I've known Kevin for a while. Um, well, ever since... He was, I don't know, ever how young, I, I, a baby, really, I guess. Um, I didn't. I wish I could tell the story. I don't wish that, like, I changed your diaper and stuff. That did not happen. I wouldn't have done it. I'm sure your mom and dad would have been happy to let me do it, but I never did that. Like, yeah, I don't know. So, um, but, but um, no, I've known him for a long time, and it's just, it's been such a privilege to watch him just um, grow into the man of God that he is, and I, I was able to witness him um, being a youth pastor at another church, and just uh, how 
just this passion for teenagers and how she relates to them. And I've, I've always been super impressed with that and, um, and then his creativity. Um, and then um, I had the privilege of doing the um, premarital counseling with Kevin and Rachel as before they got married and um, got to know Rachel and equally um, as impressed with her. And they are just two just amazing people that ha just love the Lord and super creative and going to be such a huge addition to Fairline Church um, for our youth ministry and um, all together, all, all in all. So um, if you have not met them yet, get to know them. Uh, they are just, just awesome people. So we are so glad that they are here with us. Do you have anything to add, Pastor Mark? Yeah, I'm excited about the future of Fairlawn and, um, you know, what God's going to do um, with our youth department. I'm glad to see Pastor Jimmy's out of that department, finally, because the numbers were dropping. But now I'm so excited with, with this transition right here. I just think God, I mean, the sky is the limit. So I'm, I'm very happy. I'm very excited. So that being said, huh? Yes, definitely. Would you guys... Have anything you want to say? I'll throw you right on the spot. Anything? You knew this was coming. We're excited to be here. And we're looking forward to seeing what God is going to do. Amen. Amen. Yeah. If, I think that, um, Kevin, you had that song, you meant, When a Man Loves a Woman, you wanted to sing for Rachel. Yes. So if you guys can hit it. Um, no, we're actually, we're going to, we're going to pray, um, over them and we're going to ask, what we're going to do is ask, um, Pastor Rocky and Miss Linda and then, um, also Julie and Heather to come up as we lay hands and then the deacons and their wives to come up as we, and we're all going to lay hands on them and then we're going to ask you guys to stretch forth your hands so if we can get, um, let's come down. Yeah. Here. Also, I'd like to get Susan and Doug, if yes. they would come up too, please. Um, if they would be the closest to them and kind of lay hands on them. As everybody else. Actually, I know we're going to get a lot of people them. up here. If we can get um, Buddy and Levere up here, actually. I mean, there's, just, yeah. there's just something important about just transitioning authority, you know, from the father to the son to the daughters. Uh, there's just something really powerful about that. If you, if you guys can come in and... I just, I want to know, he's been here a couple times before. This is Susan's dad, and this is, he was my children's church leader. And I have always, like, when I think of, like, preparing a message, and stuff like that, I remember how this man would deliver it. And I tell you, like, my youth pastors, my pastors, I can't remember any of their messages. But I remember so many of the messages that he shared when I was eight years old, nine, like, so it's, um, I'm really excited to have you guys here. And um, if you guys can just come in, we're going to lay hands. And um, but, Buddy, would you mind praying over our new youth pastor? Do we have a... Father, we thank you, Lord, for your grace, your kindness to us, for putting us in Christ and making us your very own. We ask you, Lord, that you will bless this church, bless Kevin, make and Rachel, make them a blessing, Lord, by this power of your spirit in them, edify these children and youth that will be under his ministry, that they may be conformed to your image and be holy and completely yours. We thank you for doing this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Has anyone in this room ever been touched by a, just had a youth pastor just pour into your life? I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my youth pastor. I'm totally honest. I've shared, and I've shared this story with a lot of, a lot of people. I just, support 
support it. Not, not only don't support your, your youth pastors, but support a church that supports youth pastors. Because what happens, right, it's, it's, you know, when, when the kids aren't as fun anymore, right? Oh, they're not really any fun anymore. And then that's when the youth pastor steps in. When it is hard, when, when I was, when I stumbled into church as a 12-year-old, never having been, had any exposure to, you know, church or, or, or to God or to anything else, and a youth pastor put their arms around me and loved me, and they are the only reason I'm here today. Because I've heard just as many people say, oh, I went to church, and, you know, I had to sit with the old people, that's what they would say. I'm now one of those old people. <laughs> but it's just the, 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 there's so much negative influence in this world today, and our youth pastors just pray for them. Just I'm so glad that you guys are here. And I have the microphone, so I get to make a special appreciation for you. So thank you so much. <laughs> All right, we are going to praise and worship our Lord and Savior today. So please stand to your feet with us today. So excited to be here with you and just looking forward to seeing God move today. Sing this. 
Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life. That I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for and all that you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. Has he done anything for you? Yeah. Woo! All that you've done for me. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He has done so much for me. He's done so much for us. God, we love you. So grateful for your presence in this place today, God. Jesus, 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 Jesus. I count on one thing the same God that never fails you won't fail me now you won't fail me now in the waiting the same God who's never late is working all things out is working all things out yes I will Lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy in all my days. Yes, I will. Yes, Lord. I count on one thing The same God that never fails You won't fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting The same God who's never late Is working all things out You're working all things out Yes, I will too high in the lowest valley, and yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy in all my days. Yes, I will tell for all my days. Yes, I will. I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Nothing can stand against. I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Nothing can stand against. I choose to praise. And I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Nothing can stand against. I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will. That's your name. Oh, my days. Yes, I. 
Yes, Jesus. God, we thank you. Yes, we will. Say yes to him this week. Yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Jesus. Yes, Lord. It's all he wants is our yes. The work is done. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, we love you today, God. Jesus, 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 Jesus. I'm 
Thank you, Jesus. God, we love you. Not I, Lord. It's Christ is moving through us. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. This is how I fight my battles. Says that guy. This is how I fight my battles. Praise and worship, that's how we fight them. This is how I fight my battles. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. 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 It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Put your voice in this part. This is how I fight my battles. This is how we fight my battles. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. 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 It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. 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 
fighting our battles for us. God, we stand behind you. And you do the work, God. God, we say yes to you in this place, God. Jesus, Jesus, this is how we fight our battles. God, we exalt you in this place. I'm so thankful for you. You know, I don't, uh, everybody can be seated for a minute. I don't, I don't want to compromise here. We're family. And I don't want to, what I mean by I don't want to compromise is I don't want to compromise and only do things that we are familiar with. I want to be obedient to the spirit of the Lord and what he's saying do. Um, I just feel like, is there anybody here that's got any kind of, uh, that came today with any kind of physical ailment, any kind of issue that they've just been needing to give over to the Lord, the Lord to take care of. If so, raise your hand. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Okay, so body, look around. Look around. Let the body look around real quick. Go ahead and get around somebody. If we're family, get around somebody with their hands that's raised right now. Just get around somebody. Get around a person that has their hands raised, please. I want you just to, as, as a body, just specifically just speak in the name of Jesus. I mean, we don't have to get into detail. He knows. The Spirit of the Lord knows. Just in the name of Jesus, I command you to be healed and whole. Just declare that. That's the heart of the Lord for this person. Declare it over them. Lord, we just ask for just all mental stability to start coming back in the name of Jesus. Any areas of forgetfulness, we just command it to leave in Jesus' name. We all have the mind of Christ, as Scripture says, Lord. We believe that. We declare that, Lord. Any ailments, any physical problems in the body, Lord, we just command them to be healed in the lineup with your word right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, you're the only one that can do this. Lord, we just ask for anything, any problems, any addictions, any habits that don't belong, Lord. Bring them to our attention, Lord. Reveal them, Lord, and take care of them. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. why he fights your battles <clears throat> because he loves you you know why he fights your battles because you place your trust in him okay put put your trust in him I prayed this morning as um, what to bring you uh, for offering because we're gonna transition for offering and you know there's there's many scriptures that um, we could bring and I kept coming back to this one and it's Proverbs 3 9 and 10 where it says honor the Lord with your possessions and with your first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. So I started studying what a vat is. Well, new wine represents the Holy Spirit. It also represents harvest. All right. Um, and I thought about when we're born again, we become a new creation in Jesus, right? So all things are, are gone. We, we become new. I know it's a process, but we are a new creation. We are born again by the Holy Spirit. Well, that new wine, he is not going to put that in an old vessel because we're no longer that old son. Well, we weren't even a son, really. We're not that old man. We're not that old woman, child, whatever it may be. We are now sons and daughters to the king of kings. So we should bring our first. I know it's Old Testament, but really your first. You know, you should pray. 
what to give. You should always give your first of whatever comes in. Why? Because that is honoring the Lord. That is putting him first. And when you put him in first, oh my gosh, the the blessings will overtake you. Overtake you in everything. The word says, as your soul prospers, so will you prosper. But he'll prosper you sometimes in good health right? With a roof over your head or a car that keeps going after 16 years because I made a choice to want to be a good steward. So I dig into his word and I sit at his feet and I get my instruction from him. If I went with the desires, like what I want is a Highlander, okay guys? And I tempted myself and I was about to sign and I said, I got to sleep on it. I'm a Christian, I got to pray. And if I didn't get 100% peace, I'm not doing it. And that peace didn't come. Am I going to receive the desires of my heart? Yes, I am. But everything is in his timing and for his purpose. So today, I ask that you seek the Lord and you give with a cheerful heart. Remember, it's all about a heart of worship that you're given unto him. It's not about how much, but I ask that you, I don't know how many, don't raise your hands, but we talked about testing him in this, right? I don't know how many tested him in this, but if you you do test, stretch your faith and give unto him and watch. Watch what he does in your lives. Father God, we're going to pray. Father God, we lift this offering up to you, God. Let it be a sweet, sweet fragrance unto you, God. Let us give our best with a pure heart, Father Lord, unto you. You're such a good, good God. And I could praise you all day long and stand here and just tell of your goodness, Father Lord. You bless your daughters and you bless your sons. And we are so thankful for the gifts that you give. And I ask that you bless this offering in the name of Jesus. There are many ways to give. They're going to pass, but you can give by Venmo, online, text to give, in person. If this is your first time, we have many ways to give. We also have a black box in um, the back if you feel led to give. Thank you. Hmm. Can I ask for all the children to come up, please? If I can get everybody to stretch your hands forward at these little ones, this next generation. Declare over them in your own words if you want to. I'm just going to go ahead and speak over them. Lord, I just ask you, God, to prepare their hearts, God. Prepare their hearts for just an encounter with you, Lord. Lord, that they will just leave changed, knowing more about you and who you are, Lord, and your thoughts about them that outnumber the sands of the seas, Lord. Lord, develop their character, God, to make it look more like you, Lord. We thank you for them, God. We thank you for what you're doing in each and every one of them. And to Jesus goes the glory. In Jesus' name, everybody said? Amen. 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 Yeah, I got it. It's right here. All right, no, I'm okay. You guys excited to be here today? Yeah? Can I get some of the lights flipped on? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. There we go. We've got to learn. We've got to understand the principles of the Lord. We've got to see one another. Amen? Amen. All right. 
Um, quick testimony. They're talking about the principles of the Lord, a quick testimony. And I'm going to be transparent. Uh, we love to be transparent here. Right, Pastor Jimmy? Right. We love to be transparent. Um, I've been transparent in the past about driving and people cutting you off and things. And, you know, your flesh wants to take hold. You want to get crazy, you know. But here's another one. So one morning I woke up early and I had to go to the Goodwill and had to pick up something for somebody. So I get there. I didn't even have my coffee yet. And I get into Goodwill and I go there and it's just it's just busy. There's a lot of people there. And I'm like, wow. All right. So I go and I pick out the items that I need to get. And I go around the corner to get in line. And there's like, there's a line. Okay. There is a line. And I just have a couple items, like two items. And I'm just sitting here thinking, oh my goodness. You know, and how many people know them thoughts? Your flesh start trying to creep up on you. And your flesh, Galatians 5, it has a voice, right? Your flesh, it can start trying to talk to you, right? Because there's always a battle between the flesh and the spirit, correct? And so it's either however you get up and set your mind, if it's in the flesh, then it's going to be death. If your mind is set on the spirit, then it's life in Christ Jesus. Amen, right? But that morning, there was no coffee. There was no time with Jesus. There's a long line in front of me, and two registers were open. And as the two registers were open, there were people there that didn't look like they belonged in there. Okay, And they had a mountain of stuff. I mean, two carts that were overflowing onto the floor of stuff and up there. And then you know the judgments. Come on now, I'm not alone. You know the judgments that start running through your mind. You start getting critical. You're in this long line. There's no coffee. You start looking and you start thinking, I bet you they drive a Range Rover. What are they even doing in here? You know what I mean? I'm looking at the way they dress, looking at their shoes, going, what? Do they even? Man. You know, these thoughts just start racing through your mind of being critical, right? And judgmental. And, and you just get to a place where you're just kind of like, feel like you're self-entitled. Right? You feel like you're self-entitled. And so as these thoughts tried to creep in, I started going, I started to recognize them, and I started to go, no, 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 this, this ain't the way you think, and I started to just like cast them out. No, I'm not self-entitled. Lord, bless this line. Bless these people. They need this stuff. Whatever's going on here, Lord, I don't know. I can't judge it. I can't be critical, and I started making a shift from the flesh into the spirit with my mind and saying, Lord, bless them. I'll give people behind me my spot. I'll go all the way to the back. You know how you start doing, right? And then you just start getting this peace starts to well up from the inside and overtake you. And you're not anxious anymore because you're getting out of the flesh. You're making that transition. And then instantly talking about the principles of the Lord, right? Instantly, the lady in front of me never turned around and looked at me behind her. Never. Instantly, when I said this inside of myself, I got, I got this. Excuse me, you only have a couple items. You want to get in front of me? Instantly, when I started making it right on the inside, do you think the Lord, the Spirit of God, was wanting to make a point? Instantly, she turns around and says, Honey, you only got a few things. Get in front of me. And she said it so loud that the two or three carts in front of her turned around and looked at what I had, and they all wanted me to move to the front, to the front of the line. Think about the goodness of God. Think about the principles of God. Where would somebody be if they were angry and bitter? They'd be in the back where I was at, right? Right? Critical, judgmental. I mean, so I think that's a lesson in that for all of us to learn, right? God is, he's near and dear. He's here. He hears your thoughts. He knows what's going on. He knows when you make a stand for him in your heart and in your mind. And he backs you. He does. And it's the goodness of God that's then released into the atmosphere through that. And that's what we are. We're carriers of the kingdom of God. That's what we do. We go into an environment. We change the atmosphere by the things that we declare. Like in here as a family, I wanted you guys to declare over one another the healing of God. We create that atmosphere under an open heaven, as the Bible talks about. There are open heavens. The heavens were opened up. And what? In Matthew, where it talks about when John baptized Jesus, the heavens were opened up. 
And the Holy Spirit came down and descended upon Jesus. Those heavens were never closed back up. There's whole teachings on that. We are under open heavens. When we worship, we're under an open heaven that binds principalities and powers to not be able to interfere as we worship God. Amen? You guys awake? Yeah? You guys excited? Amen. Amen. All right, so getting into what I want to speak about today. Now, I have spoke. It's one of my favorite subjects, and, and Pastor Rocky's laughing because I'd probably beat y'all to death with it, but it's okay. It's all right. I love, I love, I love, I love talking about the heart of a father. I love talking about this. I love going into different aspects of it. I have many different teachings on it that I have spoke about in here. You guys all know that about me, but this is a different part of that. But you guys know that, I, and before, I have always spoke on that the number one reason that Jesus came here to earth was what? To reveal a father. Number one, no other. Number one. To reveal a father. A byproduct of that was the cross. A byproduct of that was death and resurrection in the blood. A byproduct of the will and the heart of the father sending his son to reveal a father to orphans. You and me. Jesus came and the Bible says that he came and he did nothing of his own. He said nothing. He did nothing. He didn't see what? The Father saying or doing first. What does that tell you? That everything Christ did was a picture of the Father and who the Father is telling Him to do it. So we finally get to see a picture for the first time through Christ of the caring, gentleness, amazingness of our Heavenly Father. Right? We get to catch a glimpse of who our Father really is. So I've spoke on that many times. I've spoke on the fact of what the Father's motives are. We all know it's love. We know the Father came to reveal His love to a bunch of orphans. We know that the Father came to reveal His character and nature to show us that He has purpose and plans for us, to show us that He's equipped us. We know this. We went through it. But there's another part to this that I want to kind of examine today. I want to investigate it. You guys with me? Let's go to John 519, please. Therefore, Jesus answered and was saying to them, truly, truly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself unless it is something he sees the father doing for whatever the father does These things also the Son does in like manner. John 5.30, please. John 5.30 says, I can do nothing on my own initiative. As I hear, I judge, and my my judgment is just, Because I do not seek my own will, but the will of him who sent me. So here's this statement. Not only is he declaring that he can do nothing of his own, nothing, except what he sees the Father doing. But he says, as the Son of Man, I can do nothing of myself. That statement is big. Why is that even in there? As the Son of Man, I can do nothing of myself. Is it an accident? (laughs) Man, have you been looking through my notes? Huh? Okay. As the Son of Man, not the Son of God, but as the Son of Man, I can do nothing of myself. This is a huge statement. As the Son of Man, I can do nothing of myself. So 
So what does that mean? The question is, and remains, for me is anyway, how to model this lifestyle as a man or woman. That's what it becomes. As the son of man, I can do nothing of my own. So the question becomes, I'm a, I'm, I'm a son of man. You're a woman of, of man, correct? Right? So it kind of almost transitions us right in line with him. Amen? Philippians 2, 7, 8 says, But Jesus emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men. Think about that. Emptied himself, being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. So the question is, I start to see this picture forming. I mean, let's back up for a minute. Even if he did all his miracles as God, the Son of God, I would still be impressed, right? I would be impressed. I would be cheering if he did all his miracles as the Son of God. I would stand back and applaud, cheer, say that's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. But at best, but at best, I'm just a spectator at this point. I'm just a spectator. So there's a reason, and we're going to dive deep into it. There's a reason why he's calling himself the son of man, right? To model a lifestyle, to model a position that me and you can get into. People of imperfection can follow after. That's me and you. You know, he empties himself, and he takes on human form. He fights all temptation. He never sins. Hebrews 4.15 says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but one who has been tempted in all things, as yet without sin. Imagine that. He's been tempted in all things. Is that not hard to believe? Think about that. He's been tempted in all things and past. I'm starting to see a pattern emerge. Number one, Jesus is baptized. Number two, the spirit descends on him. Number three, he's led into the wilderness to overcome temptation. That's Matthew 4, 1. Number four, then Jesus starts his ministry. He starts his ministry. I realize that he set an example that I can follow. All throughout scripture, we see him casting out demons. We see him walking on water. We see him raising the dead. He does all these things as a human being, the son of man. But there's a catch. He's in right relationship with God, the father. He's in such a relationship with him as a man that he is going off. Many times pulling away from ministry to go off to spend time with the father, to seek the heart of the father, to get refreshed as a man. And then come back to ministry and do these things. So you see this pattern. This is a pattern that we have too. That he set that we can model. A lifestyle that we can have. We can leave here encouraged today. Knowing that we can do the same things. He did this as the son of man. So that we would have the ability to say. I can do that with him. I can co-labor with him. When we, when we put it off as Jesus, yes, he was God. But then when we put it off as the fact that he was God and only God can do those things, then we're a spectator. We stand off at a distance. We don't get involved. 
We become complacent. We don't partner with the things that the Son of Man did because he was in right relationship with the Father. We don't partner with those things. We don't get up out of our chair and run after people who are sick. We don't run after people who are in the hospitals. We don't run after the deaf to see their ears opened up. We don't run after the blind to see their eyes opened up. But he's telling me here, he's made it possible for us to do that, to live this lifestyle. He's given us a spirit man, and I've done many teachings on this. He's given us, 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says that we're made up of three parts, flesh, soul, and human spirit. And in our human spirit, he's given us the Holy Spirit, right, to encompass our human spirit. So therefore now we are righteous in the eyes of God. We are righteous in the eyes of God through our spirit because God is spirit. God is spirit, and all those who come to him must be in what? Spirit and truth. In the Old Testament, you couldn't come before the spirit of the Lord or you would die if you weren't a high priest, right? But now we can enter into the throne room of God, spirit to spirit, human spirit to his spirit. We can go, we can have communion, we can talk, because when we got saved, when we got born again, our spirit got sealed in the Holy Spirit. Now our spirit man is sealed away from any kind of infection, anything that is ever wrong. It is righteous now in the eyes of God. We've still got to deal with the soul, we still got to deal with the flesh. That's not today's teaching, but we have a spirit that is in right standings with God. God even calls it that we are justified now to stand in front of him. He's given us a gift of righteousness. We find in Romans 5, 5, 1, Therefore, since we have been made righteous in the eyes of God, we have been made righteous now through the Spirit in the eyes of God. He's created in us a new nature. 2 Corinthians 5, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a what? You're a new creation. Your spirit, man, is a new creation. The old creation has been done away with. But so many times we live there. We function in old habits old patterns, old nature, old flesh, when the truth is we're in right standing because of Jesus Christ. We've been given a new nature, not the sin nature anymore, a new, clean nature we've been given. And we're to model this life of living and believing in what Christ has done on the cross through faith not of our own actions. It's nothing that we can apply our hand to. It's all gifts given to us. We have the ability now as sons and daughters of God by looking at the lifestyle Jesus lived as a man for us, we can now entertain that lifestyle. And not only that, we have the Spirit of God living on the inside of us. We have a new nature We're called righteous now in the eyes of God. Look at all the things that we've been given to change this world. How many times have we come in and heard a good sermon or a good teaching on how we should be praying, how we should be asking this and asking that. I'm not saying that's not biblical, but how many times have we heard that and we've developed that as our lifestyle? Well, I'm going to ask for it. If I don't see it, it must be a no-go. How many times have we let that make us complacent and not go nowhere? 
When God is saying, I've given you everything pertaining to this life, now inside of you, and we need to get that which is inside you up and out to change what's around you by speaking and declaring to this mountain, be lifted up and cast into the sea. But yet we're complacent because we don't trust that. First Peter 1 Peter 1.16 says, Be holy as I am holy. Now let me tell you something. There is no other way that I can be holy as he's holy unless Jesus has done something to my spirit at the point of salvation. If he has not sealed my spirit with the Holy Spirit, as it says in Ephesians, there is no way I can be holy like he's holy. Because that's what he's talking about, spirit to spirit. All right. If all of this is true, then suddenly I realize I can't stay in the condition I'm in. I can't. If all of this has been given to me, all of this has been done for me. I start, reality starts to hit that I can't stay in this condition. I must change and become what was held in front of me as an invitation. Amen? I must become this person Christ has called all of us to be. And he's modeled this lifestyle. It's not an unattainable lifestyle at all. So this is why he emptied himself. Imagine that. He emptied himself of his divinity and stepped down here. I want you to get this picture if you don't get anything else. Christ, almighty, left his abode, emptied himself of all divinity, stepped down and became a man so that he could model a lifestyle for me and you to get involved with and follow out. He would pattern a lifestyle for me and you where we would have no excuses, none. He modeled this lifestyle so that we would never stand back and spectate and just come to church and play church, but we would get up and get involved. And that we would get it done. John 4.12 says this, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. Look to your neighbor and say, you can do the works Jesus did. I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things. Look to your neighbor and say, even greater things. Even greater things. It's not impossible. It is not impossible. This is our destiny in Him. This is our purpose on planet Earth to bring heaven to Earth. If there's something that you don't have understanding about, it's fine. Call on the Lord. Get revelation. Ask Him. He says, ask, and it shall be given. You shall receive. Ask. But other things you don't have to ask because they're already modeled for in Jesus' lifestyle. They're already modeled for in Scripture. You don't have to ask. You get out. You declare who He is, what He's done. You stand in faith, and you believe. And a lot of times, guess what? That takes Obedience. Hold on a second. Did you just say obedience? Well, now you're getting legal on me. I, I got to get out of here. God's grace is no more. God's grace is no more if you're telling me I got to be obedient now. Nope, nope, that's not what I'm telling you. Obedience. 
to be obedient does not mean that you have to have understanding first in order to be obedient. Now, see, that stops a lot of people right there. That messes with a lot of people because a lot of people want everything drawn out. They want to hear from the Lord 52 times and get 500 witnesses before they do one thing or make a move to the right or the left. And guess what? Understanding is not a prerequisite for obedience. He never said, I'm going to give you understanding before you comply. Because a lot of times, if you don't have understanding and you are obedient, that means what? You trust him. And that's what he's looking for, a heart that will trust him. A heart that will trust him. Jesus healed everyone that came to him as a man. In the form of a man. With the Spirit of God upon him. Everyone who came to him and everybody the Father sent him. He healed them. What say you? Are we able to do this? Are we able to live this lifestyle? Oh, I'm not. I'm just waiting for this slow computer to go down. All right, here we are. Let's talk about obedience for a minute. You don't, you don't obey in order to receive something. You obey because he's the sovereign Lord of the universe. Because the creator of heaven and earth has asked you to do something, to move forward with something, to not do something, to speak or not to speak. That's why we obey. But a lot of times people will not obey unless there's something to gain. A lot of times you'll see people not obey unless there's a promise of favor. A lot of people will not give unless there's a promise of a return. A lifestyle, you might want to write this down, a lifestyle that is obedient to God brings forth a clean conscience. How many people know you can't move right or left without a clean conscience? The Bible says that a, clean, that a conscience, your conscience will either justify you or condemn you before the Lord. Right? Paul said that their conscience was seared through like having a hot iron go through it. Right? A lot of times we think that it's the Spirit of God who's rubbing our nose and convicting us in a situation when it's the conscience inside of you that is condemning you. The voice of your conscience is condemning you. It's not the Spirit of God. He doesn't bring on guilt and condemnation. The Spirit of God in John 16 says to the unbeliever, He'll reveal, He'll convict them of what? Judgment, sin, and righteousness. Read on. But to you who believe, He will do what? He will reveal the truth of a situation, not rub your nose in it. He will convict you of the truth, the believer, and He will reveal future events to the believer. Them are the two things. As a believer, the Holy Spirit does. If your nose is being rubbed in something when you mess up, it's not the Spirit of God, it's your conscience. Well, the Spirit of God just kicked my butt the other day. I messed up, and the Spirit of God rubbed my face in it, and the Spirit of God told me, and man, I could hear Him just wanting to beat me up because of this. No. Nope. Nope. Not happening. He will reveal truth. 
before you get ready to do something, he will tell you, he will present you with what is truth. And you have a choice. I can pick what is truth or I can go off and do what I want to do. But obedience to God brings forth a clean conscience. I wrote here, not protecting the conscience through obedience will breed compromise. How many of us have ever compromised because we weren't obedient? How many of us? Has anybody ever been somewhere and the Lord's told you to do something and you didn't do it? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, fear of thoughts and opinions of people usually happens out in the marketplace, right? Well, that breeds compromise, right? And then what happens to your conscience? You get condemned afterwards, right? Because you weren't obedient, to what the Lord asked you to do. I remember somebody walked in one time and me and the Lord were talking about healing. We were talking about healing. We were talking about healing, talking about healing. And we were, the whole morning was about healing. Everything was about healing. And I was just like, yes. And then somebody had an issue right in front of me, get out of a car with an issue on their hand. And I'm like looking at them and they walked right in the store and I knew I was supposed to get out and pray for them. And then everybody seemed like started getting out of their cars and everything. And it had been right out in front of everybody. And at this point in my life, I was like, I just shrunk back. I just shrunk back. I'm not the only one in here, right? Anybody else? Just being open, transparent, honest, right? I just shrunk back from it. Complacency is what I was left with. Compromise. It says that Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. How many times have you guys been in a situation where you've went around the mountain, you've done the same thing, you've had the same bad results, and then you just came to the end of yourself and you said, something has got to change. I've got to do something different. I am sick and tired of being in this pig pen like the prodigal son. I am tired of laying in this pig pen. I can get up, change my life, go back to the Father. I can have things renewed and changed in my life. How many people have ever been there? Absolutely. Absolutely, I have. And guess what came out of that? I knew never to go back down that road again. I knew from that point what not to do. My obedience to not do that came out of my suffering. My suffering. My strength to not do that anymore came out of my suffering. Second Corinthians 10.6 says, And we are ready to punish all disobedience whenever your obedience has been made complete. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? As the Son of Man, as He was, right? He took and got baptized, and then the Spirit of God led Him into the wilderness to deal with temptation. And then He came out and started His ministry and started performing miracles and power, signs and wonders. But guess what? Not until He got through the temptation process. Not until... He could be found worthy and trustworthy to choose God over temptations. To make a right decision out of obedience. Think about that. Look at this scripture. What happened after that? He was ready to punish all disobedience, wasn't he? All spiritual powers. He was ready to punish after that point. Right? So it says again, 2 Corinthians 10, 6, and we are ready to, to punish all disobedience whenever our or your obedience is complete. So many of us have to be able to get control of our flesh. We've got to be able to get control and make it submit to us, to submit to the Spirit of God. 
So many people still let our flesh run wild and run crazy and dominate us and have authority over us and power over us. When we, it's the complete opposite now. We have been given authority over sin. It will no longer dominate you. You can now speak to those things and have them removed in Jesus. This is the lifestyle you now have. This is what's available to each and every one of us. Hebrews 5, 8, although he was a son, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. A yes. Give the Lord a yes to obedience. And guess what it will submit? Your legacy. How many people in here have ever thought about legacy? Maybe you got a business. Maybe you got a family. Maybe you want things, start something that your kids and your grandkids can participate in and become a part of as, as, as it grows a legacy. Let's look at Genesis twenty two eighteen. This is God speaking to Abraham. In your seed, all nations of the earth shall be blessed. Why? Because you have obeyed my voice. Look at that. Legacy through obedience. Because you have obeyed my voice, all the people in your family will be blessed. All the people in your community shall know who I am. Because you were obedient, I found a heart that I could trust. A person that represented me well. Someone who believed that they could do the things that my son modeled for them here on earth. Someone whose heart is captivated after bringing the kingdom of God here to earth. Pastor Jimmy, you want to get ready? We want to come up and play. Pastor Jimmy, be on standby. Obedience gives birth to boldness and confidence. I did not know that. I did not know that. How many people know that it's a big deal to be confident in the Lord? It's a big deal to have boldness and step out and know what it is that God's doing without an issue. Boldness and confidence is a huge deal. And guess what it comes through? Obedience. Obedience. Not understanding what you're doing, but stepping out and doing it anyway. And letting the results be on Him, not on you. If you lay hands on somebody and they don't leave here healed, that is not on you. That's not for you to answer. That's for the Lord to make up His mind what He's going to do. Your part is being obedient. Your part is loving that person in front of you as a foundation. And you want to see them healed. You want to see them whole. Whether or not they walk out of here healed or not is not on you. You don't have to have fear of thoughts and opinions of other people. You're doing your part, and he, trust me, if you step out, he will meet you. He will meet you. So obedience gives birth to boldness and confidence, Acts 28, 31. They proclaim the kingdom of God with all teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with what? All boldness and without hindrance so I ask you again how can you draw near or speak in a hostile environment with confidence and boldness say it again be obedient number one a relationship with dad. 
Number two, you have faith in the one who has accomplished it all. That's Jesus Christ. Number three, you move in obedience without understanding. Unless the Holy Spirit decides to give you understanding, and that's okay too. You move with confidence and boldness, with a clear conscience before your dad. And through obedience, legacy is granted. Amen. Amen. Pastor Jimmy. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Mark. You know, I was thinking not too long ago, like, you know, John 14, 12, it says that you will do greater things than these. And I wonder sometimes when we plan our messages and we tell some of these stories that are in the Bible, is I wonder if Jesus is like, you're still talking about that? Like, I said, you're going to do greater things. And um, I think a lot of us, if we're honest, most of us, like, we haven't experienced those greater things. And why we are, is we're talking about those things. But he does. That's why he told us. That was a promise. You, you will do greater things. That's available to us. And um, it's kind of overwhelming when you think about it. You know, the greater things. Because there's some pretty great things that I... Um, we're still talking about walking on water and turning water into wine and you're going to do greater things so I don't know about you but I want to experience those greater things in my life thank you Pastor Mark for that word you guys stand with me as we get ready to pray guys if you need prayer if you want to just talk to someone you are surrounded by people who love you some really amazing people you're surrounded by my best friends, and I encourage you to reach out to someone. If you want one of the pastors to pray with you, you have um, Pastor Mark, Pastor Rocky, Pastor Kevin, myself. We will love to pray with you if you want to reach out to one of the deacons. But we're all family here, so you can just reach out to the person next to you or the person in front of you. Whoever it is, if you need to talk to someone, if you need prayer, I encourage you, do not leave here today without finding someone to do that with. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for this time that we were able to come here and, Lord, to focus on you and just enjoy the things that you have for us. I thank you for the word that you laid on Pastor Mark's heart. Lord, I pray that you help us, Lord, to apply those principles to our lives. And Lord, I thank you for what you're doing here at Fairlawn and here throughout Fort Pierce and the St. Lucie County and the Treasure Coast, Lord. I thank you for allowing us to be a part of it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.